All right, pulling on into the Amazon warehouse. I've got a 515 to 815 block. So this will be interesting to see what kind of mile, gas mileage I'll be getting. You can see here's all the other flex drivers picking up their packages. Uh, I've been working for Amazon Flex now for a few months. And uh, in the past, I had the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon and I took packages in that. And I think this will actually work better because it has a fully enclosed cargo area and it's all one space. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, it's actually a pretty small block, only 12 packages. <laughs> actually, uh, plenty of room here. And uh, this particular block is a three hour block, like I said, only 12 packages, which is pretty good. I, I should be able to get it done, in, hopefully in under uh, three hours, more like uh, maybe two to two and a half is what I've been seeing. Sometimes it does go the length of the block or over it, uh, just depending on uh, any complications, trying to find locations, traffic, stuff like that. And uh, this particular offer, I, it, they call it offers in the app uh, for blocks. Uh, this offer for this was $67. It had gone up, it was normally 54, which is like 18 an hour, but depending on the urgency and how uh, much they want you to take it uh, the price can go up the offer can go up And that's when I think you can really make some more. That's when you make a really good uh, rate uh, driving for Amazon flex Now I don't do this full-time I, I wanted to try to make it a full-time gig, but you just can't get the number of hours You can't get 40 hours. Or I, I haven't been able to get 40 hours like I don't see 40 hours worth of offers show up like I'll turn the app on early in the morning and I don't even see anything pop up. I guess that's mostly handled by their 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 van drivers and uh, they do the majority of them and Flex is just kind of a supplemental. Like if they can get, if they have more, which they do, they, they get Flex drivers to deliver those. So here we are, I haven't even made it to the first stop yet and uh, battery's already uh, down below 1%, so it's gonna be doing mostly gas. Coming up to my first stop. Easy enough. Next stop is only three minutes. What is this guy doing? It's that way. Uh, keeps getting mad at me. I don't have my seatbelt on. If anything, this thing's gonna save gas alone just from not idling so much. All right, going to an apartment now, nine minutes away. Apartments are my least favorite, but hey, they still gotta get their packages too. And the reason I say that is sometimes uh, building numbers aren't clearly marked. Sometimes it's third floor. Sometimes they don't have easy access. They're gated. Um, Amazon does a good job of giving you the gate codes for everything, but still can be cumbersome.
<sighs> it can be a very relaxing job at times, actually. I mean, you can listen to your music. There's no boss over your shoulder watching your every move. It's very uh, independent. I like about that. That's what I like about uh, delivery driver jobs in general. Doing this job, you get to see a lot of interesting places. Sometimes these deliveries have special instructions. Uh, this one's delivered to the customer's front door. Delivered to customer. Do not leave unattended. On to number eight. All right, this is one of those where I can use the app to unlock the gate. See if it works. That doesn't seem to be working, but. Actually, this is the wrong apartment complex. I'm supposed to be at the one next to it. It looks so close on the uh, map, on the app, I thought this was the same complex. Just part of the trials you go through when delivering, especially to apartment complexes. Ta-da! It's magic. Didn't have to enter a gate code or anything. It's called one-click access. I guess Amazon's worked with the some of the apartment complexes to get the gates to open. I think a Jeep, um, actually very good vehicle to have for a delivery vehicle. Uh, I've had to take uh, packages to pretty uh, sparse locations uh, out in the country, places where roads aren't in that great a shape, um, places where you gotta go off-road actually onto people's property and um, or to access it. And places I wouldn't wanna take an ordinary passenger car, uh, not just for the potential to get stuck, but um, you know, totally beating up your vehicle every day like that, it's not good. A, a lot of times a Jeep is, a Jeep is a more rugged vehicle. It's uh, made to handle some abuse and it's, the parts are simple. The, the tech, suspension technology is, uh, you know, it's old school. So it, it doesn't cost a whole lot to repair certain things. The parts are very simple. 
Uh, so I think actually a, a Jeep would make a very good uh, delivery vehicle, whether in stock form or the you know the high-level off-roading Rubicon trim. Here's an example of uh, some of the conditions you can end up driving in. This road's not bad, but I've I've been on a lot worse. And I am not sure this is even the right place. It's not physically in the right place. Put in four low. I'm gonna say I don't think this is it. it says you can leave packages. There's a special note. You can leave packages in the wooden box about 10 feet behind the mailboxes. Okay, that makes sense. After getting on the phone with Amazon driver support, I was able to have them make the package deliverable to the alternate location. Packages for Amazon are geocoded so that they are able to only be delivered at the exact locations that are specified in the app. If you're not at this location, you won't be able to mark the package as deliverable and it won't let you deliver the package. Well, this was definitely a case of one of those that the place the map wanted me to deliver it to was nowhere near where the customer wanted me to deliver it to. They live off of a rural road and they want me to deliver it behind their mailboxes, which is right off the highway, but uh, they, the app was wanting me to take it all the way back to their residence, which was <laughs> down that dirt road I just went down. So. Uh, I had to call support and they kept trying to fix it and eventually they marked it. They had to do something that made it able to go through, which that kind of sucks. Um, but at least they have a workaround for it. Um, I wish they would change that location in there, but oh well. On to the next one. dead ends down there. Looks like it turns into a private road. Hey dog. And I just finished my first shift my first Amazon flex block in the 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xE and uh, wasn't bad, it was very easy, made uh, driving very simple and very efficient. Um, the computer is saying, now I drove about 60 miles today. Um, the trip computer is uh, giving it a mpg of 22.7 now like i said before um it seems to, it seems to rate it pretty low and i think it'll go up as i do um, more commutes to my day job and mostly electric i'm able to do that in mostly electric uh, when i charge overnight and i just have a level one charger and you know it takes 15 hours to reach full charge but even if i don't charge it for that long it, it gets at least you know 70 80 90 percent full and my commute to work is about eight miles each way. Uh, mostly about half of it is uh, city arterial street and the other half is on uh, freeway. Um, and I just set it to electric mode with re max regen and I pretty much drive back and forth to work in all electric. I'll go, I'll go out of that range a little bit, but not very much. So I think that's why I've been getting uh, 
extremely uh, good MPG uh, with my last tank being around 35 miles per gallon and hopefully it can raise this one back up but still compared to my Jeep Gladiator doing this it was it would get about 16 miles per gallon so if this is getting 20 even if it's getting what the computer says at 22.7 uh, that's that's more efficient that's uh, very impressive and this is actually I'd say better suited to do that job than the gladiator unless there was just some package that needed to fit in the truck bed um, this was uh, very nice I don't do this as a full-time thing it's just a uh, for supplemental income and uh, it's not bad it's not a bad way to make a little bit of extra money uh, and you you get to see a lot of different places a lot of different neighborhoods you i've been everywhere from very very poor neighborhoods to you know mansions to places out in the country on acres and acres of land that would just blow your mind uh, so you see a little bit of everything it's very it's very um kind of rewarding job kind of engaging uh i don't get really that bored with it um, but I really can't do it as a full-time thing, but now if it was a full-time thing, I, I would almost consider, you know, buying like an electric vehicle to do the job or an electric crossover, uh, something like that. But as you can see, sometimes you end up going down these roads that aren't, I wouldn't want to take a passenger car down, especially with my own personal one that I use every day. So I was able to complete my shift in about uh, just over two and a half hours, 2.6 hours. And at $67 for the shift, that comes out to about $25 an hour. Now that doesn't include commuting time, which you could say that that should be factored in there. I look at it as, you know, I've commuted as far as 48 miles to go to work anyway. Um, and you just never know. I mean, some, this, this trip, I'm pretty far out. I'm about 30 miles away from home. Um, and the drive to work, I, I, I work relatively close to uh, the, the distribution center that I, I work out of mostly. And that's uh, that's only about an eight mile drive. It's actually not far from my other uh, day job, if you will. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you do need to factor that in, but even without that, I, I think that's pretty good pay. Especially for the level of work you're doing. If you're good at finding things, logistics, driving, uh, being self-sufficient, independent, uh, this is a very good job. I hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride. And if you like this content, please like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.